Hello everyone, uh, I am Nikki with Day Trip Diva again here to talk about the topic of the day is foods I've tried during my travels. Now this particular story is about um, a promise I sort of kept to myself. So when I had came off the road at the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody was like freaking out and like everybody was going indoors and stuff, um, I didn't have a job. So I didn't have a job for four weeks. That is the longest, that is the largest employment gap I've ever had. I have always had a job since I was 16 years old. So not working felt so strange. You know, I was like, I can't do this. I can't just be in this house all the time. Now, when retirement comes, different ball game. I don't know how people get bored in retirement. You work your whole life and you're finally at a point where you got money coming in and you don't have to work for it. I'm gonna find something to do. But right now I'm like young, robust, and I want money and I want stuff and I got these dreams and all this stuff. So I kind of just want to, I just kind of want to go with it. So anyways, um, so I was working on my blog because I didn't really get a chance to work on it while I was on the road because we had too many problems with Wi-Fi and, you know, a lot of the places we were uh, d delivering loads to at that time was, um, um, it was a bunch of truck stops and truck stops were charging for Wi-Fi and there was no guarantee you were going to get a strong enough Wi-Fi. You got hundreds of truckers at a truck stop, all of them paying for Wi-Fi. Is the Wi-Fi that good, especially up in the mountains? Come on now. So, and they, and they were expensive. It was like $30 for some Wi-Fi. And I was like, and I, and I got to share it with somebody else? No. Uh, no, nah, I'm good on that. So, uh, we had a lot of Wi-Fi issues. And, of course, my service provider was terrible, pretty much. And uh, I had like one or two bars in most of the places I've been to. As long as it was strong enough to run a GPS, I didn't really care. You know, some of us don't have friends to talk to all day yeah but anyways um what the little promise i had made i was browsing through um maine um i had been wanting to go to maine and you know you hear about the maine lobster i actually got the idea from family guy <laughs> you know new england maine massachusetts uh, martha's vineyard <laughs> the episode where you know um Peter acts like a nut and Brian tries to hit on Lois and they're in Martha's Vineyard and I don't know, they released lobsters into the sea. Uh, Brian and Lois had bought some lobsters that was going to get cooked and they released them back into the ocean. Anyways, um, so the inspiration kind of came all from there. I, I've always kind of wanted to go to Maine and I wanted to try a Maine lobster and I was determined. I was determined that I was going to wait until I got there to try um, that lobster, even if I never got there in my lifetime. And then I got hired on a uh, delivery driving for um, Panther Logistics and delivering loads all over the country in a Sprinter van, kind of like the Prime, the Amazon Prime vans. So I got into that and I got to see more of the country than I did in an 18 wheeler, but that's for a whole nother video. But um, anyways, so I had a load going to Massachusetts. I was like, bet, this is, this is like perfect because it's right up in there with like New England and um, Maine, of course, is further up, but, but um, you know, it's as close as I'm probably gonna get. So I'm gonna check it out and see. So when I got to Massachusetts, and they were talking about lobster rolls and things like that. And I had already researched this stuff. So I was like, yeah, I want to try one. But I had conditions. Same thing in my city. See, I live in the hood of Jacksonville, Florida, right? I'm not eating no seafood places around here. It's too far away from the ocean, which means most likely their seafood is frozen. I don't care that we're 45 minutes away from the ocean. Still too long. If it ain't going from the ocean to a pot, like within an hour, 
Because <laughs> most likely that stuff is frozen and everything like that. And there's hundreds of restaurants in Florida where the boats come in, they give it to the restaurants, the restaurants do what they do. And then you get like fresh lobster same night. And I'm like, yeah, see, that's where I'm at. Um, so I Googled it, researched the restaurants um, that had lobster rolls. And of course, there was a lot of them. And so I found this one that had like really high reviews and it was pretty reasonable on the price, I guess. So I get to this restaurant and of course it's on the water and it's in like this little, I don't know, like a little town or something, like a little sea town. And they had boats everywhere and they had these restaurants and it was crowded as heck because of course it was the weekend. And, um... So I go and I'm nervous as heck, you know, I don't know anybody, you know, and I'm not really that talkative type person. <laughs> no, but anyways, I ordered the lobster roll and then I see on the menu that they had clam chowder. Now this was another thing I wanted to try because I was going to try it in the Campbell soup can, but everything in me was like, no. <laughs> Do not eat that. You'll probably get sick. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll wait on that too. But when I saw clam chowder on the menu, I was like, this is my chance. I gotta try this. So I got the lobster roll. And if you don't know what the lobster roll is, is um, it's like a tiny little bun. It's got a huge slit in the top. And some of them have like a square bottom, so they sit. You know, they, you don't have to worry about it rolling over like a hot dog, but uh, they put a slit and then they use the lobster meat. Um, the, the first one I had was the lobster claw meat. They use the claw meat, like literally they slid it out because you can still see the shape of the claw. And they put it, they stuffed both claws into this um, little tiny roll. And you can get extras on it. You can get lettuce, tomato, stuff like that. So I got tomato uh, bacon and lettuce on mine because just in case and then they give you butter with it and uh, you know butter and um, so they give you butter with it and uh, the other lobster roll I've had um, I was in Maine I actually went I actually got a load to Maine and I was like I'm definitely trying it and there they just put lobster meat in there um, they probably grounded up the claw or they might have put the tail, or I don't know what part of the lobster was in that one. But the first one I had was definitely the claw, because it still had the shape. You know, the, yeah. So, I did that, and I got a small bowl of the clam chowder at that restaurant. Because I was like, I don't know, I'm not big on clams. And the chowder type thing with all this white soupy... I wasn't really with it. So I was like, but I do want to try it, you know, just so I can say I, I've had it. And I had the clam chowder and lobster roll. Took a long time to get the food. Oh my God. I think I waited an hour for the food because it was jam packed there. And of course, we're in the pandemic. So restaurants are becoming shorthanded. They're backed up and everybody's, and this was the time where everybody was ordering food. So they had runners and delivery drivers like crazy delivering food. And um, so we were practically, people who were still going to restaurants was practically on a back burner. I finally got it and I decided I was going to sit down and eat it, you know, be a part of the whole whatever. Uh, this was before restaurants started shutting their doors and not allowing people to sit in. Like, like I said, this was the early stages of the pandemic where people weren't quite sure. And there were people in denial about the whole thing. So they were like, uh -uh, I'm going to continue to go and eat inside the restaurants. So anyway, so I sat in and um, I went to eat. I went to eat it. You know, the lobster roll, and oh my God, we pour the butter on the lo Oh, Jesus Christ, have mercy. Best stuff I ever had. And then the clam chowder. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you could tell me nothing. If you aren't getting it from a restaurant in Maine, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New England, 
don't even don't try that crap in the Campbell's can because it ain't got nothing. I don't have, I haven't even tried it, but I can all, I already know it's probably straight garbage, because that clam chowder was insane. I was licking the freaking bowl after it. I mean, I was eh. <laughs> on the clam chowder. I oh my god, that was good stuff. Um, but I definitely wouldn't try it anywhere else unless if it was up north. Like, Florida has lobster rolls and clam chowder, too, but mm, I feel like it, it's always better to try it in the home or in the places that it's most famous for. So, that's my story on trying that, and um, hopefully I could try a Philly cheesesteak when I go to Philly. I've been to Philly a couple of times, of course, and it never crossed my mind to get a Philly cheesesteak. I know, I know. I plan on trying that. But the moral of the story is when you're traveling somewhere, look up places that it's famous for and try it when you're there because you never know if you will ever visit it again. You, I mean, you just can't say. You know, you may think that you're so comfortable in your lifestyle that um, I could just book a ticket and I'll be there. Yeah, that's nice. But... Things do happen, situations do change, and you may not get the chance to ever go there again. So, that's it. Pow, pow, pow. Um, if you like my videos, guys, just like and subscribe, please. Um, you don't have to. I'm not pushing you. But yeah, this is Nikki with Day Trip Diva, and I will see you guys later.